Hey, future respiratory therapist. Question today comes from Pawan. Question is, can you relate airway resistance to physiology or talk about the physiology of airway resistance? I'm going to try to do this as briefly as I can because I'm sure all of you have exams coming up and I want to teach you something, but I also don't want to distract you from what you're studying right now. So let's break it down real quick here, okay? Airway resistance and the physiology of, okay? Three major components. The first one, flow. Okay, now what do you need to know about flow? Well, the answer is simply this. The higher the flow, the greater the amount of airway resistance. Okay, we'll say it again. The greater the flow, the higher the airway resistance. If you ever have a patient on a mechanical ventilator and you can play with flow, then I challenge you to adjust the flow. Turn it up to 70 or 80. Your peak pressures will go up. Your plateaus will stay the same. That's the first por portion of the airway resistance formula, right? Airway resistance formula, PIP minus plat divided by flow in liters per second, okay? So when you do that, you're going to see that a greater flow will result in a greater PIP. Your plat will stay the same and your airway resistance calculation will present to you a higher level of airway resistance. So on flow, higher equals higher. Higher flow equals higher airway resistance. Why? Because the greater the flow, the more turbulent it becomes as it moves through the airways and the less smooth everything operates. So higher flows, while they're definitely needed and definitely indicated at times, I'm not trying to say high flows are bad. I'm just saying high flows equate to higher airway resistance. That's all I'm saying, okay? So when you do just the opposite, you'll see that if you have a low flow, you'll have more laminar airflow, which will result in lower peak pressures and overall lower airway resistance, okay? So that's the first thing we need to talk about is flow. Now, the second thing we need to talk about is airway size, okay? The diameter of your airway, especially in a mechanical ventilated patient, this should make sense. An 8.0 versus a 6.0. This will equal the 6.0 will have a higher raw or higher airway resistance than the 8.0. Why? Because it's a smaller diameter. Okay? So size of tube matters. Okay? The lower the size, the smaller the diameter, the greater your airway resistance is going to be and the longer your E time needs to be to accommodate this. Okay? The higher you're in the tracheal tube, doesn't mean you won't have airway resistance problem, but just the less chance of airway resistance being a problem from your artificial airway. Okay, so that's in regards to artificial airways. Now, if we talk about airway size with asthma, then we understand that asthma has an increased airway resistance. Why? Because of bronchospasm. I'm going to try to get this on the board, and I did. Bronchospasm. If you have bronchospasm, what happens to your airways? They go from this to this. That's bronchospasm. Your airway went from nice and normal size to a constricted and smaller size. Your airway lumen is now smaller. It's the exact same thing of taking an 8.0 out of a patient and putting a 5.0 in the tracheal tube into a patient you would experience the same difficulties in gas, uh, in ventilation and moving gas because your airway resistance is now higher, okay? So when you talk about airway resistance and airway size, you can talk about it in artificial airways or you can talk about it in disease processes such as asthma. Now you can also have an increase in secretions. This will also increase your raw, okay? If you have a lot of secretions and your airways don't go like this, but instead your airways get filled with gunk. And when they get filled with gunk and secretions and thick mucus, then the lumen, the airway that air is, gas is actually passing through, becomes smaller. 
So this, this kind of is broad spectrum when you're talking about this right here. Bronchospasm, decreased airway lumen. Secretions, decreased airway lumen. What about a patient who has a nice big in the tracheal tube, but they're biting on the tube? Did you, does your tube get smaller? Does your airway get smaller? Yes. Does your airway resistance go up? Yes. Absolutely. What about a patient with a, um, a tumor inside an airway in some area? Does that decrease the airway lumen? Yes. Does that cause your airway resistance to go up? Yes. Why? Because your airway size has now gotten smaller. So decreased size equals increased raw. Okay. And then the last one we're going to talk about is length of airway. So airway length. Okay. Now what this comes to is talking about trachs versus endotracheal tubes. If you have a trach patient with an 8 trach versus a patient with an 8 endotracheal tube, your patient, everything else constant, your patient with the endotracheal tube is going to have a higher airway resistance because their airway is much longer. That 8 endotracheal tube is much longer than that 8 tracheostomy tube. Okay, so that kind of should make sense, right? So airway length, if it increases, then you'll get an increase in your raw. Okay, let me tell you a little something that I've learned throughout the years. A little trick that is not a cool trick. I've seen patients put on automatic tube, I've seen respiratory therapists put automatic tube compensation for a patient who they're trying to get off a of vent. They have, let's say they have an 8.0 in the tracheal tube, okay? And No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They, let's say they have a 8.0 tracheostomy tube, okay? And we turn the tube compensation on and we set it to compensate for a 6.0 in the tracheal tube. Now, the automatic tube compensation automatically, based off of the tube size you put in, calculates the amount of compensation to overcome the airway resistance of that artificial airway. So you have an 8.0 in the trache uh, 8 tracheostomy tube, but you've set the tube compensation to compensate for a 6.0 in the tracheal tube. And the patient looks amazing. And you know why? Because there's too much compensation happening. Because the vent is trying to overcome for a lot of airway resistance from that 6.0 in the tracheal tube, a super small tube and a very long tube. When the patient actually has a decent sized tube and very short. Okay, does that make sense? Now what this does is give you a false presentation of how your patient is actually doing. Because when you go, oh, they look great, let's do trait collar trials, and you start doing trait collar trials and they fail immediately, it's because of that false tube compensation that was inputted into the ventilator. And that's not cool. Don't fake something just to make a patient look better during your shift, because that becomes the next shift's problem, okay? So to wrap this up, Airway resistance tied to physiology, you give a gas flow at a higher rate, you'll have a higher airway resistance. Turn the flow down, your airway resistance will go down. Airway size matters. The smaller the airway, the higher the airway resistance. Apply this to the tracheal tube, apply this to asthma, apply this to increased secretions, biting on the tube, T tumor, apply it to anything that makes the airway smaller and your airway resistance goes up. And then finally, the length of the airway. A longer, a longer passageway to pass the gas through results in a higher level of airway resistance as opposed to a shorter distance to pass the gas through. Pawan, I hope this helps. If it doesn't, send me a message. Please comment in the messages below. If you have a question you want me to answer, put it in the comments below. I'll answer it. Okay, the list is long. I'll get to it as soon as I can but I will get to it, okay? And lastly, if you have not subscribed, please do so right now. Thanks for watching.